Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here today, and today I'm going to talk to you about the connection between the thyroid and the gut. Uh, this information I'm going to share with you today is, is really going to help you understand what causes a leaky gut. It's going to help you understand how to be tested for a leaky gut, uh, because the kind of, of test that you need uh, in order to determine if you have a leaky gut is not a, a typical or a standard test. You can't just walk into your, into your uh, general practitioner's office and say, hi, I'm here, I want to be tested for a leaky gut. Um, so I'll explain to you the, the proper testing that needs to be done. And lastly, I'm going to explain to you how a leaky gut can lead to many, many different kinds of chronic health problems, uh, including things like Hashimoto's and, and diabetes. So what causes, so first off, what is a leaky gut? Okay, well maybe you've been hearing more and more about this thing called a leaky gut. And so what is it and why is it important? Well, number one is that a leaky gut or leaky gut syndrome is a very common problem where the lining of your intestines has become co compromised and as a result, it can become inflamed and it can activate the body's immune system. Normally, the cells of your intestines are really held together. They're held together by these structural proteins, actin and myosin, and these uh, structural proteins form a barrier. And these proteins prevent larger substances, uh, undigested food particles, uh, you know, undigested proteins, viruses, bacteria, gluten, dairy, uh, things like this from passing into the, into the uh, circulatory system. But when someone develops a leaky gut, these structural proteins that again are, are like glue, um, that, are, that are gluing together the epithelial cells together, they become unglued and they, be, and they separate. And as a result, these uh, foreign uh, proteins, these foreign particles, these molecules, now pass through the intestinal wall and they get into the bloodstream where they're not supposed to be. The immune system now sees these molecules as being foreign. It begins to attack them, and often the body will now mistake these immune complexes as tissues or glands of the body. And we call this something, we call this molecular mimicry. And uh, it's this molecular mimicry that will trigger an autoimmune response leading to things like Graves' disease, Hashimoto's, thyroiditis, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, diabetes, multiple sclerosis and just really a slew of many other autoimmune diseases. So most people don't realize that there is a major, major connection between your digestive system and your immune system. In fact, 90% of your immune system lies in the gut, uh, in the gut lining that is, known as the gut-associated lymphoid tissue. And this is a very, very highly specialized tissue in your body that plays a major, major role in um, many different kinds of infections as well as autoimmune conditions. And so if you suffer, with a chronic health problem. Maybe you have asthma or allergies uh, or chronic infections. Maybe you have a child at home with autism. Maybe uh, you're a diabetic. Maybe you're uh, in chronic pain. This is just another reason why it's just so very important to have a healthy digestive system and correct a leaky gut if you have it. Okay, so let's talk about what causes a leaky gut. Well, there are many different factors involved in a leaky gut. Frequently, it's a combination of things like poor diet, chronic stress, uh, who's not under chronic stress these days? Hormone imbalances, toxins, medications. In fact, taking antibiotics because maybe you or your child has had an ear infection or maybe a respiratory tract infection will eventually affect the integrity of the gut at some point in time and lead to this leaky gut. Um, other medications that people take uh, because maybe they have a headache uh, a couple times a week or because maybe they're in, in pain and so they, they, they grab uh, something like a, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, things like aspirin and things like ibuprofen. These medications, even though they're over the counter and we tend to think of them as being safe, they eventually can break down those barriers and lead to this leaky gut condition. There are other things uh, like chronic infections that can exist in, in the gut. Uh, maybe we have a chronic infection or we have a parasite in the digestive system. That can also lead to a leaky gut. One example that I find often on testing is an infection with something called H. pylori. And uh, H. pylori, you know, the typical allopathic treatment for H. pylori is uh, antibiotics and an acids. And so these are the very things that can set you up for future problems. And this is why it's so important to address the cause of this problem. So as you can see, there's a lot of different uh, factors which can lead to a problem within the gut. Most of them are lifestyle choices that we've made over the years. So how do we correct this leaky gut problem? Well, as usual, I recommend that you consult with a competent doctor that specializes in functional medicine. Uh, but without a question, I will say that it all begins with your diet, okay? I recommend that you do this. I recommend that one, 
that you get a, a special test called a food sensitivity test. And this is really going to help you identify foods that are either compatible with your immune system or they're not compatible with your immune system. Uh, this guide will help you in eliminating some of the everyday potential causes uh, of foods that you could be putting into your body that are acting as this constant barrage of irritants. The next thing that I recommend is that whatever foods that you show positive or you test positive for, that you avoid those foods for at least 120 days, okay? 90 days minimum, but at best if you could do 120 days. Uh, this is going to give your, basically your immune system some rest uh, just from the constant barrage of, of these irritants. Uh, this alone will often, you'll notice uh, just a, a huge difference in, in this alone, okay? The next thing is, uh, and this is a super important step, is that you're going to want to get tested for things like parasites, things like yeast, uh, mold, chronic infections, and then something called a lipopolysaccharide. These lipopolysaccharides, these are endotoxins. These are basically um, irritants or sludge produced by, by certain types of bacteria that can be overcrowding or living in your gut called gram-negative bacteria. And this can cause some major, major damage to the intestinal cells. So identifying these agents is, is super important, but also being able to um, determine which specific agents are there so that you know how to deal with them, okay? The last thing that you're going to want to have done is testing on your thyroid if you haven't had your uh, thyroid gland tested, and you want to have your adrenal glands tested, okay? so. A poor functioning thyroid, poor functioning adrenal uh, glands can without a doubt cause low acidity levels in the stomach. And that can cause a couple of different things. That acidity level, that hypochloric, that hydrochloric acid that is uh, naturally designed to be in your stomach, if we start to have low acidity levels, meaning that the, the acidity of our stomach uh, starts uh, leaning more towards an alkaline environment, in other words, the pH starts to increase. We start to get more towards 6.0 or 7.0. Uh, that's going to create a problem in the fact that that hydrochloric acid is designed to kill parasites. And again, here's why taking in acids and taking in antibiotics can affect our hydrochloric acid levels. But so can hormonal imbalances. So can low levels of thyroid function. Okay, Again, low, low thyroid function, which I've discussed in other videos, can also cause hypochloridia. And again, this is a major, major problem. So just a couple quick points um, to really kind of bring this video to an end is that one, a leaky gut is a very common problem in individuals who suffer with chronic health problems. Number two is that 90% of our immune system lies in the gut. And this is why if you suffer with any kind of autoimmune condition, you really need to, to get the proper testing to identify that you have a leaky gut. Number three, there are many different causes of a leaky gut. Things like antacids that we've talked about, pain medications, antibiotics, food sensitivities, hormone imbalances, high stress, hormones. These are all lifestyle factors that can be influenced, uh, that can cause and influence our, our, our digestive function. Number four is that there are specialized testing that can identify the cause of your leaky gut. Um, number five, and this is lastly, is that a leaky gut can be corrected naturally. It can be corrected with dietary changes, can be corrected with natural medicine, but as in most cases, it usually takes some time. Some, sometimes it can take four months, sometimes six months, eight months. Kind of depends on, on what the status of your digestive system really looks like. But again, here it's best to work with a doctor who specializes in functional medicine, who can guide you through this process and make sure that, that these gut barriers are healing the way they should. Again, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. I hope you enjoyed today's quick video. As always, please share this video with someone who might be suffering with a thyroid problem, an autoimmune problem, or any other chronic health problem. Take care.